All right, so at the end of the last video, we saw that we were finishing up this um, slide here where uh, we were comparing what soils look like at these various soil water potentials. And so this scale here is in uh, Pascals, and we just wanted to make sure we have these um, decimal places in the right place to use the scales, the scale of megapascals. Okay, so this soil over here being very dry beyond permanent wilting point here, remember permanent wilting point, um, is going to have unavailable water or if any water at all, but it's basically plant unavailable. This is also, remember, going to be unavailable um, to plants because saturated soils, because this is saturated, have a high content of gravity water, gravitational water, that percolates through and leaves, um, that, that basically fills all those large pores. And because the hydraulic conductivity is so quick or so fast, uh, roots do not get a chance to, to take up that water. And they're also flooded, which uh, reduces the oxygen uh, content. <clears throat> and we may have written this earlier, but low oxygen content and high <clears throat> hydraulic conductivity prevents the roots from being able to uh, to take up that that water that's in this saturated soil. So the the available water is here in the middle between um, <clears throat> zero or negative zero point zero three megapascals all the way to uh, one point five uh, negative one point five megapascals. Okay. So basically, um, water is, as we've been talking about, is um, water is driven, water movement, I guess, by um, a water potential gradient in soils, and, and as well as in plants. But in soils, we're talking about water movement in soils, but uh, also by bulk flow. Okay, so that's what we're concentrating on in this topic here. And bulk flow whoops, um, is basically equal to another way to, to use, another term to use that means the same thing as mass flow. Um, and it is the mass transport of water molecules. Um, down a, not a um, water potential gradient so much uh, in terms of diffusion, but down a hydrostatic pressure gradient. Hydrostatic pressure gradient. All right, and so we're talking about um, either uh, positive pressures, or negative pressures. Now we tend to think of bulk flow as being um, the result of positive pressures just because it's easy, we use the analogy, uh, if we've if talked about this already in class, the analogy of turning on the faucet of water and so there's a high degree, <clears throat> degree of hydraulic conductivity because of that hydrostatic pressure gradient from you know inside the faucet to down in the tub whereas we don't have water from the tub going up into the faucet that's up the, the hydrostatic pressure gradient um, and so the same um, and now so that's just an analogy that we can use um, with an exaggeration of the pressure differences but you know that occurs in the soil um, Mass flow or bulk flow is not dependent on, uh, it's independent of solutes or solute concentration in the soil solution. Um, and in plants, we just talked about hydrostatic pressure gradient in soils, but in plants, uh, where would bulk flow be present or occurring? It, occur it occurs in xylem, um, which is essentially an enclosed tube. 
without you know a plasma membrane to uh, check uh, be that checkpoint where uh, materials are either are selectively um, transported um, and so we can also refer to this area of um, plant tissues called the apoplast occurs in the apoplast which is what xylem is but we'll see uh, that apoplast is also present in leaves um, or in soil as we were talking about before in um, open spaces such as uh, soil channels like um, capillary pores or large pores uh, bulk flow does not occur across membranes uh, um, where selective permeability is a uh, is important all right okay now bulk flow so bulk flow is this sort of rapid more rapid than diffusion and let's see we'll, we'll skip down to here um, it can be measured so how is bulk flow measured and we'll get an idea here of factors that are important to determining bulk flow all right so we use the equation uh, which is volume flow rate uh, which is symbolized here uh, equals a change in hydrostatic or the gradient in hydrostatic pressure the hydrostatic oops that's an I pressure gradient times pi r to the fourth the radius to the fourth this is the radi oops let me write a little bit neater here the radius of the conduit and this whole term is divided by a constant here that reflects the viscosity of the fluid all right so the thicker the the more viscous or um, less um, more the thicker the fluid basically the slower the uh, flow rate which is the inverse proportionality of this constant here all right so in the next figure we can see a diagram to help us um, sort of apply this this um, this uh, equation um, where we have the same diagram we've used before but in this case we're gonna say this represents a sand pour or channel and this one here represents uh, maybe a clay channel so the diameter of the conduit is much smaller and so the because of the the larger diameter over here in a sand pour for example uh, there is less influence of those adhesive forces on the sides um, and so there are more water molecules with a higher chemical potential here in the middle that's not in that's not hindered by those adhesive forces so we have a greater um, you know degree of movement of water or, or more kinetic energy in this water that isn't uh, encountering the the uh, resistance from the walls by friction or by adhesion whereas over here in the clay um, particle or the clay channel uh, we have water um, sort of slowed here or impeded by the flow rate rather is impeded by friction more frictional forces 
plus adhesion. So according to our equation here, the larger the radius, the faster the volume flow rate. And in fact, if we look at that uh, equation we can see that it's to the power of 4 the difference. So an example that we used in class was to uh, compare um, in numbers a sand pour or channel versus a uh, clay pour. So remember that a sand pour has uh, a radius of 2 millimeters and a clay pour has a radius of less than 0.002, so we'll say 0.001 millimeters. And so there is basically a 2,000 times difference in the size here. But it, the flow rate is not 2,000 times faster in sand. It's actually 2,000, the rate is 2,000 to the fourth times faster in a sand pour, which equals 16 trillion, if I'm done doing the math correct here, times faster. So it's exponentially uh, a, a faster rate. So we can conclude, based on our equation and our, dem our demonstration, basically, that the um, the greater the, the radius, the faster the flow rate, and the greater the, pre the hydrostatic pressure gradient, the more uh, difference there is between point A and point B, the faster the flow rate. But then again, as we said, the more viscous the medium or the, flu the fluid, then the slower the, the um, flow rate, which is here we go, the greater that symbol, like an uh, N, I don't know what that's called actually, um, the slower the flow rate. So we'll, we'll continue with our um, discussion of bulk flow uh, and movement of water by both bulk flow and by uh, soil water potential gradients as we continue into now how uh, water is interacting with roots.